This is Matthew McConaughey. Natalie Portman. James Patterson. Michael Ian Black. And you are listening to Five Questions with Dan Chabell. Steve, welcome to Five Questions. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Who or what originally inspired you to pursue a career as an actor? My grandmother, Katie Newman. She was in the hospital and I was talking to her and I said, Grandma, I think I want to be an actor. She said, you've got the acting bug, don't you? And I said, wow, yeah, I've got the acting bug. And she gave me the confidence. To start, I was 11 years old, and I went to a group called the Teen Repertory Theater. That is in um, Long Island, Nassau County, Long Island. And uh, that's where I started training. And more recently, you took a break from acting to care for your father. Why was one of his last wishes before he died for you to return to acting? Well, I took five years off, and except for a couple of day jobs, I took care of my dad. And last April, he said, you know what, Stephen? You got to start going back to work. And I said, well, well Dad, I want to take care of you. He said, no, no, this is good. He, he knew how much I, I enjoyed working and I enjoy acting. So, you know, sometimes people just have an instinct for things. You know, my wife and I were talking about something this morning about how important a good attitude is. And uh, my, my wife has great instincts. So my dad, too, had a great instinct. He said, I, I just want you to go back to work. Well, that's that's really great. And I'm sure he liked seeing your work as well. And there might have been something where he, he felt like he was maybe kind of holding you back or, or whatnot, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, to an extent, yeah. Yeah, well, I did feel that way, but you know, when someone's not well and you love them, there's, you know, there's just no question what you do. You know, it's sort of like there's a million dollars in a chest at the bottom of the ravine, but, you know, your your friend or your loved one has a broken leg and they got to get to a hospital. You take him to the hospital. There's, yeah, you know your priorities. There's, yeah, there's just no question. And you're already kind of bouncing back strong, doing multiple projects we're going to talk about. How do you come up with the idea for your latest stage play, Tales from the Guttenberg Bible? And how does it capture your storied career? Uh, my friend Julian Schlossberg, who's a wonderful producer, he's produced many Broadway shows. He read uh, this book I wrote many years ago about some of my adventures in Hollywood. He said, you know, I think this is a play. So I, he said, start writing. So I wrote 300 pages, and it was going to be Nicholas Nickleby, a six-hour play. And he said, you know, let me edit it. And he went to a few theaters, and David Saint, the artistic director of the George Street Theater in New Brunswick, New Jersey, he really liked it. And he said, I want to commission this play. I want to do it here. And that was about four years ago. So they whittled the 300 pages down to 68, and um, and then my dad passed last July, and they called me around October. He said, "You want to do it?" And I said, "Yeah, it's a comedy about family, about career, about being Jewish as a movie star, as an actor, about you know, family, love, all kinds of stuff." Yeah, it's re really well timed and really captures your career and and plays to all your strengths and who you are. Thank you. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. We've, we've gotten some goodbye, honey. We've gotten some great great reviews too. Yeah, good shape. Congratulations! Yeah. And you're also writing a book. Uh, I mean, you've you've done this before, but I think this one is going to be a massive massive hit because you know you've obviously were were a caregiver for your father. And the amount of, you know, baby boomers and people who are older who are, you know, turning retirement age or, or you know, seeking additional caregiving help is, is growing. Like, you know, the market's really big. Um, what do you hope to accomplish with this book, tentatively titled Time to Think? Well, the book, 
came from the experience I had caregiving for my dad. I would leave at 3 a.m. on a Monday morning from Los Angeles and drive to Arizona, 400 miles, get there about 8.30, and then take my dad to dialysis every day. And then I come back on Thursday to see my wife. About 800 miles a, a week I would travel. And caregiving is a noble, rewarding, emotional, painful, debilitating, hurtful, sad, happy, lonely experience. Most caregivers are alone with their patient, their loved one. It's not like you're on a football team or doing a play or working in an office. You're alone. So I wrote a story about my drive there, my dad when he was very healthy, and my dad when he started getting sick. When I was a little boy, my dad helped me put on my pajamas. And when I was older, I helped my father put on his pajamas. So I wrote about that. And um, my luckily, <clears throat> I was in a supermarket and I met my friend, Jake Steinfeld. Jake Steinfeld owns a company called Body by Jake. Very big. He's a very, very big entrepreneur and one of the first guys to start the health and wellness life system around the world. So I told him my story and he said, you know, I think that's a book. So we called his agent, Jan Miller. He's written several books. Oh, I've heard of Jan Miller. Yeah. Yeah. So I spoke to Jan and she said, I think this is a book. So I started writing the book, sitting next to my dad in dialysis. And then when I, I wrote about a hundred pages, I sent it to Jan and then he got a, a wonderful editor to help us. And now I'm, after the play, I'm gonna rewrite it. And then uh, Post Hill, which is a wonderful publishing house uh, is gonna publish it. And I, my, my purpose is in a long winded way, to tell other caregivers, you're not alone. You're not alone. It's really painful. And I, and, and I want you to know, we all are pained by watching someone we love debilitate and, and wither. It's really hard to watch someone you love go from 190 pounds to 140, from 140 pounds to 90. It's really tough. And a lot of, People are alone in that. And it's hard. You're there all day. It's really hard to shower somebody. It's very hard to put their clothes on and off at night. It's hard to wake up in the middle of the night, hear them go to the bathroom and make sure they don't fall. There are 35 million caregivers in this country, at least. You know, that's 10% of our population, probably 20% of the adult population. So maybe two out of 10 people where I'm sitting right now are caring for their parents full time. Caring for their loved ones full time. So I hope that this book says to people, you're not alone. We're all going through it and we love you and we love each other. And I know what it's like to sit at a microwave and eat your dinner quickly. So. You can get back in the room and you don't want them to see you eating because that day they don't have a, an appetite. Or you get up in the middle of the night when that person that you love so much is moaning and hurting and you've had two hours sleep and you're up for five till seven in the morning to try to make them feel better. And then at seven o'clock in the morning, you've got to try to get your life going and take a shower while you're hoping they don't have to go to the bathroom and then you run in and then you've got to get them to the bathroom. And sometimes you have to take them to the bathroom 
And sometimes they go to the bathroom on a commode. Sometimes they go in a bedpan. And how humiliating it is to them that you have to clean them up. How humiliating that is. How horrible that is. So that's why I went to work. Well, I think it's going to be real big. I had a friend who was a caregiver for his dad who died last year. And my uh, future father-in-law is caring for his uh, 97-year-old grandma. And that's been very difficult. So I'm seeing it. I haven't done it myself, but I'm hearing and, and kind of seeing it right in front of me. So I think it's, I think this book and I, you know, I've written three books. Like I've talked to a ton of authors. Like I think this one is going to be real big based on all the people who, you know, ha are dealing with or will have to, you know, every single day, every single year, there's gonna be more and more and more. So congratulations. I think it's, I think it's the right book by the right person who just dealt with this at the right time. So especially with with that generation. Um, so that's gonna be really powerful. And what's your best piece of career advice? Oh, read, read, become smarter. People want to work with smart people who are, have a broad bandwidth of interest people want to work with people who know how to fix a sink and also how to um be a programmer they want to know they want people on their team who can do lots of stuff get lots of degrees become get your law degree you may never practice law but if you're an executive at a company the great thing is you're a lawyer or you're dealing with your own mortgage contract, or your your daughter is that a, it just is buying a condo, and you can read the contract. Learn, get an get, get an accounting degree, get a nursing degree. Read the classics, watch the great movies. Look at AFI's top one hundred movies. See them. Converse. Get out of your house. Don't sit in the house. Nothing happens in the house. Nothing happens in the apartment other than if you're writing. Get out. Meet people. Talk to people. Engage. Stay away from crap on the internet. Stay away from gossip, from negative shows. You don't need to watch the 10,000-pound woman and how she struggles with her life. Go watch Singing in the Rain. Go watch The Great Escape. Go watch The Graduate. Go watch Birth of a Nation. Go wa watch The Color Purple. Read Dickens, Chaucer. Read about the French Revolution. Read, R-E-A-D. Well, that's great advice. And thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me, man.